Okay, so let's quickly recap what we discussed in the last lecture of wave mechanics. So we discussed about um, interference of waves and the phasor diagram method. for calculation of the net amplitude. Let's continue from that point onwards. So then we are discussing about superposition of waves. So when within superposition of waves, we saw the first type of superposition, interference. This happens when there is superposition of waves in the same direction of same frequency. So both the conditions are necessary, same direction, as well as having identical frequencies. So we saw that if we have a combination of two waves, having amplitudes A1 and A2, but common frequency F, so common value of omega. Okay, so they have same frequency F, so omega is equal to 2 pi f and k becomes omega by v, where v is, because they are propagating in the same string, so v is common for both of them, but they also have a phase difference of 5. So when these two are superimposed, The resultant equation that we get is there is some resultant net amplitude and same frequency and wavelength and some resultant phase. So then we saw that this net amplitude can be represented by a phasor diagram wherein we represent the individual amplitudes as two arrows but with the phase difference phi. This, this is a simple way of this. Is, yes, we have yes. done this in the last lecture. Now we'll see certain special cases of this today before we move on to the next thing in superposition, which is standing waves. So this and a couple of applications of this was what we have discussed about in the last lecture. Now we will see two important special cases of interference. 
if cos phi is equal to plus one, then the net amplitude becomes e one plus e two. This is the maximum possible net amplitude. So this situation is called the constructive interference. So there is a special name called constructive interference. And this happens when cos phi is equal to plus one, which means that phi should be either zero or plus minus two pi or plus minus four pi, or in general, an integer multiple of two pi. Just make a quick note of the definition of constructive interference. Okay, now similarly, we have the situation where if cos phi becomes minus one, then the net amplitude becomes the difference of A1 and A2. And this is the minimum possible Net amplitude. So this situation is called destructive interference. And for this, the condition for destructive interference is that cos phi should be minus one, which means that phi should be plus minus pi or plus minus three pi or plus minus five pi. Or basically any odd integer multiple of pi. Okay. 
So phi in general equal to 2 and pi means that the waves are what we call in phase. So in phase is another term used for this. Okay. And phi equal to odd multiple pi means that the waves are in opposite phase. And in general, for all phi, the net amplitude ranges between A1 plus A2. And the difference of A1. Okay, so these two special cases for interference, constructive and destructive interference, along with the condition for them, constructive and destructive. Here the condition is that they should be in opposite phase. Here the condition is that they should be in phase. So this should be something that you remember and understand well. Okay. Next, we'll move on to the next type of superposition of waves. Creation of standing waves or stationary waves. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, finish writing this down. We'll discuss.
okay so let's understand standing waves now so we will understand in a moment why the name given to it is standing waves or stationary waves okay. because this type of superposition creates a wave pattern that does not travel so this is created when there is superposition of waves of identical frequencies and amplitude traveling in opposite direction the same string this phenomena when we have two waves like one wave let's say traveling like this on the same string and the other wave of same amplitude and same frequency but traveling in the other direction opposite direction on the string when they superimpose the resultant phenomena what happens is that it creates a standing wave pattern no interference bit is different okay understood no one interference is when they are traveling in the same direction and are of same frequency need not even be of same amplitude but same frequency in same direction and here the condition is that they are traveling in opposite direction and of same frequency and amplitude so we have to understand mathematically what happens when they superimpose okay so suppose y1 is given by the amp the equation e sin omega t minus kx okay. so now the other wave which is superposing with it it should have the same amplitude but it should be traveling in the opposite direction and in general it can have any phase constant compared to the first one okay. so you can see they are in opposite directions this one is traveling with v along the negative x axis this is traveling with v along the positive x axis same frequency and amplitude so the superposition of these two means that at any point on the medium x equal to x y at any time t the net displacement will be the superposition of the displacement because of each of the waves so that is going to be now we have to calculate or we have to solve this term
Okay, now for doing this calculation further, suppose we take just for demonstration purpose, let's say phi happens to be an even multiple of pi. So that means the second term can be written as equivalent to sine omega t plus kx. So we can always set up our experiment in such a way okay, that the phase difference between the two waves superimposing is of the type 2 and pi by keeping the sources at equal at appropriate distances and you know, synchronizing them and all that we can do this. Okay. So with that, what will happen is that this calculation will be a little easier to demonstrate. Later, I'll show you the general case also where phi need not be 2 and phi. So for this condition that phi is 2 and phi, this will become like this. Okay. Now we'll use the formula that sine A plus sine B is a trigonometry formula which you may or may not be aware of. So I'm just putting it here. For example, Let's take another example. Be easier to show sine 60 plus sine 30. Suppose we are doing this. So this we know is root 3 by 2 plus half. But this can also be expressed as two sine 60 plus 30 by 2. Now, cos 15, we can always calculate like this. So, cos 15 can always be expressed as
so that this can be demonstrated with a bit more calculation. So we do three plus one upon. So I'm not getting into the full conversion of this with the calculation and all. Okay. That's a mathematical thing, but just if you remember this formula is enough over here. So we will apply this formula here. So this will become that Y is equal to sine A plus sine B will become two sine A plus B by two, which will become sine omega t cos e minus b by 2 it should become cos of minus kx okay. now we know that cos of minus theta is cos theta only so so this term can be written as cos kx only okay. so finally you can write this like this. Now we can see this is not a traveling wave anymore because the argument of the function is not omega t plus or minus kx. Yeah, I'll give you time to note this down. But as I said, that numerical example was just for demonstrating the application of the formula. To actually get this final value, you have to multiply the divide the quantity inside the square root by root two, or actually inside the square root, the quantity has to be multiplied divided by two. And then the numerator can be written as root three plus one whole square and all that. So not getting into that. To show that this is equal to this, This can be written as Anyhow, now we have to understand more importantly this final formula and how this becomes the general equation of what is called as standing wave instead of a traveling wave.
Okay, so this is an equation of a standing wave. You can see that y is a function of x and t, but this function of x t is not of the type. So because it's not of this type, this is not a traveling wave. It does not come in the category of traveling wave. It comes in a different category of a wave equation called a standing or a stationary wave. Okay, so next let's next up let's understand the interpretation of this equation we saw that the superposition of these results in this equation. So how do we interpret this? So one way to interpret it is you can see that this term, this is an oscillation at SHM of frequency f equal to omega by 2 pi. But the amplitude is this whole term. The amplitude is equal to the magnitude of 2a cos k x. So this becomes a position dependent amplitude. So this is like, so the interpretation of this becomes that for y equal to this equation 2a cos k x sin omega t what is happening is that any particle on the string at x equal to x is in SHM along y axis with a frequency equal to omega by 2 pi, but amplitude equal to the magnitude of so they have 
variable amplitude according to position. Or what we can see is a position dependent amplitude. All the medium particles have the same frequency, but their amplitude depends on the location of the particle. It depends on X. Okay. So just make a note of this point and then we'll look at these snapshot pictures at various different times and we'll understand more about this.
Okay, so let's understand the snapshot pictures at various different times. Okay, so all this is there. Okay. So now let us look at from this the value of y at p equal to 0. Then next let us look at y equal to t at let's say one twelfth of time period so let's understand this term so omega t by 12 is 2 pi by t so that's pi by 6. So sine of omega t by 12 becomes sine pi by 6, which is half. So so we will plot these in a graph also, which will give us the visual understanding of these snapshot pictures but first let's work out some values for some different values of time i mean let's work out the equations for some different values of time now similarly i want you to find out yourself the equation for y at the time capital T by 8, then Y at the time, capital T by 4, they will plot all these things. <clears throat>
Okay, so let's see what happens at t by eight. At t by eight, the value of omega t becomes pi by four. Okay, so this becomes when you solve the whole thing, it will become root two a cos k x because omega t by eight. Is pi by four and sine pi by four, as you know, is one by root two. Whereas this will become two a cos k x because omega t by four likewise will become pi by two. So sine one. Yes, very good, Varun. That's correct. Okay. Now, similarly, if I just demonstrate a couple of more, so t equal to suppose I take three t by eight, so omega into three t by eight will actually give you three pi by four. So sine of this will again give you one by root two. And now, like this, if I take t by two. I'll again get zero because so sine sine pi, which is zero. This will give us minus two. Root two. And so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so you have to understand that as you are substituting these values of time, your in the original equation you have pi is equal to two a cos omega t. Sorry, cos k x sine omega t. So this term at various different times. Takes different value, so y takes different value. Okay, so these are the snapshot pictures at these various different times. So next, when we plot these snapshot pictures, we'll understand geometrically how a standing wave looks, and that will also justify the name given to it—that it's a standing wave or a stationary wave. Because we'll see that the wave pattern, the geometry of the wave, is such that it's not shifting with time.
<clears throat> okay, people. So let's plot these snapshot pictures. So now, if let's say this was a string, so we'll take as our x-axis. This end is x equal to zero. is a y axis now at t equal to 0 y was 0 so the string will just be in the mean position but for example at a time like capital t by 12 This is at y at t by 12. This was a cos k. Now, next, if you plot it at t e by 8, then you will get this kind of a graph. Next, if you plot the same thing at we plot that same thing, but again at t e by four or five t e by or things like that so you see this kind of a shape <clears throat> Similarly, if you go on plotting the graph at various different times, you see that it these kind of snapshots. So 
You can see it's a stationary wave pattern. It's not traveling. Now you can see that these points here, These are the position of the so-called nodes. Where what happens is that the amplitude is equal to zero.
okay so just the last thing now so these points here here you can see the amplitude of the wave is maximum this point here this point here this point here you can see the amplitude of oscillation is two way so these are called anti nodes they are points with maximum amplitude so this basically happens when two a cos kx is equal to two a so cos kx is equal to plus or minus 1 so correspondingly kx is equal to 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi etc so x is equal to 0 lambda by 2 lambda by lambda okay, then 3 lambda by 2 in general n lambda by 2 so these are the position of the so called anti nodes and these are the position of the nodes so you can also see that consecutive nodes will be at a distance of lambda by 2 so these are all very important facts to understand and remember about standing waves and these are the distance between corresponding nodes nodes are the position at which the amplitude is zero so you can see that mod 2a cos kx which is the amplitude gen it generally speaking varies between 2a and 0 So two is the position where we have anti nodes, and zero is the position where we have nodes. Okay, people. So with this, we conclude the idea of standing waves or stationary waves. Okay. So that completes today's lecture, and we will move on to sound in the next lecture in the next week. Okay. Sound or longitudinal mechanical waves. That is the second part. so we'll conclude today's session aruja you have asked me a doubt so i will just discuss that right now so Have you sent it to me on WhatsApp, Peter? Yeah, Aruja, can you just uh, tell me the question? You have in capacitors. Sir, I have sent you on WhatsApp. Yes, yeah, send me on WhatsApp. Have you sent just now? Yeah. Question number ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Question number ten. Ten to eleven. Ten to eleven. Yes. But there must be some circuit for this, no? Potential difference across the six microfarad capacitors. Yes. Yeah. 
this is a part of a paragraph question or no sir it's not a part of a paragraph it's a separate question okay but is there some circuit diagram for this because no sir nothing is there so then the question doesn't make sense and the diagram must be missing beta what must have happened in this question is some there must be some combination of capacitors in a circuit okay. and one of them is of 6 microfarads so you have to find the potential difference across it you understanding yes Where sir there is a diagram given sir is a ah. diagram given Yeah, just, One just send me the text. Yeah. Okay. So this is the circuit diagram. So see, your circuit is like this. So we have connected a ten volt battery, and then we have five microfarad capacitor, ten microfarad capacitor, four microfarad, and six microfarad. And these points are labeled P, B, and C. Okay. So can you tell me what type of combination these capacitors have? These two. Yes, Arujya. So parallel. Yeah, I, I can redraw it like this. Now, if they are connected in across AB, they are like this. Okay, and similarly, these two are also in parallel. They are connected between B and C. Right. So now, can you tell me what is the equivalent capacitance of this whole network between A and C? This is equivalent to between A and B. You have ten and five in parallel. So how much is that? Fifteen. Yes, sir. It's parallel combination. So C is equal to C one plus C two. That kind of thing. This is also parallel. So between A and B, it's equivalent to this. And then between B and C, it is ten. Okay, so now you have series combination of fifteen and ten. Okay, so further that is equivalent to how much? Series combination of fifteen and ten will give you one fifty by twenty five. Okay, so that is six, isn't it? Yes, sir. So this whole thing is equivalent to six. so across an emf of 10 volts we have connected a network which has equivalent capacitance equal to 6 microfarad so how much charge will be there in this case the equivalent amount of charge it will be 60 microcoulombs q is equal to c so in this diagram there will be again the same because there is equal charge in series combination okay 
So now, for example, you have been asked the potential difference across the six microfarad capacitor. That is a potential difference across BC. So you can see that this potential difference and this potential difference can now be calculated like this. VAB is equal to Q upon C across AB. Okay, so that is 60 by 15. So that is four volts. And the potential difference across BC is Q divided by capacitance across BC. So that is 60 divided by 10 or six volts. And you can see the sum of these two across AC is 10 volts. Okay. Now further here, if the charge is, let's say, Q1 and here the charge is Q2 and here the charge is Q3 and here the charge is Q4. And when you compare these two diagrams, this and this, you can see that Q1 plus Q2 should be equal to Q, which is 60 micro coulomb. Okay. And Q1 by 6 should be equal to Q2 by 4 which is equal to the potential difference across BC. So from this, you can see Q1 is to Q2 is 3 is to 2. And Q1 plus Q2 is 60. So Q1 will be 3 fifths of 60. So 36 micro coulomb. And Q2 will be 2 fifths of 60. So that is 24 micro coulomb. And like that, you can do for these two also. Q3 plus Q4 is 60. And Q3 by 5 is equal to Q4 by 10. Okay, so Q3 is to Q4 is 1 is to 2. So now using this, you can see that Q3 will be one third of 60 or 20 microcoulombs, And Q4 will be 2 thirds of 40 microcoulombs. Okay, Aruja, understood how to solve this kind of circuit now? Yes, sir. So I have one more doubt. Okay, wait. Uh, can you send it to me in WhatsApp? Beta? I have a class coming up at 10 o'clock. I will send you a solution of that. By okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much.